House and Garden is a messed up episode. We just talked about how far the series went with the horror elements in Avatar, but this is a whole different level of Twisted. In addition to that, there's a fun little epilogue to this story that I didn't know about previously, which we'll talk about at the end. After a few vicious attacks on wealthy single men that leave them robbed and poisoned with a plant-based toxin, Batman logically suspects Poison Ivy is back to her old tricks. But when he and Commissioner Gordon visit the now former Miss Isley, the Dark Knight discovers that she was declared legally sane months ago, and even married one of the doctors at Arkham. Mrs. Pamela Lillian Carlyle lives the life of a suburban mom to her husband's two boys, Chris and Kelly. Shocked at the former criminal's turnaround, Batman starts to believe she may have actually turned over a new leaf, but for some reason, he can't shake the feeling that something is off about Pam's perfect life. Meanwhile, at Gotham State University, Dick Grayson is KO'd and kidnapped by the same culprit who's been on the attack lately. The monster threatens to kill the young man if Bruce Wayne doesn't deliver $5 million in cash to the docks the following evening. Little does Batman know that at the center of all these events is something truly horrific. House and Garden was the first episode to air for the show's second season. Debuting on May 2, 1994, it rang in the final 20 installments of the series before the new Batman adventures revamped everything in 1997. I know it can be confusing since Batman is following the preferred production order, which lines things up better for continuity, so I hope I'm not confusing anyone out there. In the production order, this was the fifth episode produced for season two. Boyd Kirkland directed a story written by Paul Dini. We know Dini and Bruce Timm are fans of Poison Ivy, so I'm not surprised they gave her an episode like this one. It humanizes her while also making the character even more iniquitous. Kirkland directed other Ivy installments that Dini had a hand in writing, like her debut in Pretty Poison, and of course, the famous Harley and Ivy. But this just seemed to be the next step in her increasingly dark evolution on Batman the Animated Series. The creature that is kept in shadow for most of the first chunk of this episode finally speaks when it attacks Bruce Wayne in his car. I do the talking. Bring five million in cash to the docks tomorrow midnight. That's the familiar voice of Jim Cummings making his last BTAS appearance. He also voiced Saunders, the guy who gets attacked at the beginning. Hey! Who's in here? Cummings is well known for his legendary voice acting career, but he only has a handful of DCAU credits. We previously heard him in Be a Clown, and more prominently in Tiger Tiger. He'd later pop up in an episode of Superman the Animated Series. So Batman is out in the middle of the day for a lot of this story. Hanging out in a tree with binoculars, perched on top of a town hall, he even walks up to Poison Ivy's house with Commissioner Gordon like he's just a regular guy. It's very strange to watch this suburbia Batman spying on Ivy. We've seen him in other strange places in that suit, but nothing may be odder than seeing the Dark Knight sneaking around a small neighborhood on a school day. The binocular thing in the tree is especially weird. He's a peeping Tom. In contrast to this, we get to see Bruce in a great looking scene where he's dressed in a fedora and overcoat. Guy almost looks like the spirit in the middle of that fog as he meets the creature who abducted Grayson. It's just funny how Bruce appears more intimidating than Batman in this episode. Spoilers for the rest of the story. Bruce is able to retrieve Grayson from the plant creature and, through Robin, finds out that Pamela's new husband, Dr. Carlisle, does not have primary custody of his kids. In fact, his children, Chris and Kelly, are girls, not boys. Bats immediately speeds over to the Carlisle's house where the dynamic duo discover a hidden basement in the greenhouse. Odd-looking plants and scientific equipment take up the space and soon they find Dr. Carlisle being kept alive in a vat of liquid. He tells them Pamela isn't who she seems when Batman hears a noise. He then spots plant-human babies breaking out of their biopods. In her classic costume, Poison Ivy shows up and admits that the version of Dr. Carlisle Batman saw earlier, in addition to his two children, are actually plant-based life forms enhanced with Carlisle's DNA. Really, they're sort of plant clones of the Doctor. They're also not truly human and only live for a few days at a time. Their final mutation is that of the plant creature that was responsible for the previous assaults. 
A group of the monsters then attack our heroes as they escape the basement with the doctor. In the greenhouse above, Batman turns on the overhead sprinklers, which disintegrates the plant-human hybrids. He pumped the water tank with herbicide earlier, which seemed to do the trick. Ivy, now caught, admits that while she wasn't able to create female copies with Carlisle's DNA, she was able to duplicate herself. To the surprise of Batman, she then starts to melt away like the other creatures. The real Poison Ivy is shown on a plane, already a few steps ahead. She peers down at a scrapbook and begins to cry over the picture of her artificially generated family as we fade to black. In the video commentary for this episode, Paul Dini confirms he was influenced a bit by Invasion of the Body Snatchers. That's plain to see, but once again, I'm taken aback by how much they were able to get away with back in the 90s. The crew often said that Fox Kids didn't restrict them too much on what they wanted to show, only pushing back hard a few times. This here was just so screwed up. In a good way for the story, I mean. Ivy creating her own life is both uncannily terrifying and sad. She confides to Batman early on in the story that she can't conceive because of her mutations. However, she desperately wanted a family. I meant it when I said I wanted a family that loves me. I just wanted it on my terms. Lady, you're nuts. While her plan is twisted as hell, you still feel sympathy for Pamela. Batman almost takes pity on her in his ending narration, as we watch Isley tear up over the people she's lost all her missed chances at being happy. Ivy lost everything she had, everything she said she ever wanted. For what it's worth, I believed her when she told me for the first time in her life she was happy. This is a very effective way to shade in a villain we can empathize with, and those are usually the best kind. We relate to their wants and needs through their trauma or sorrow, but oppose their actions. Interestingly, there is a four-page story in the back of Batman Adventures Volume 2, number 16 from 2004 that plainly spells out this was the last time we saw the real Poison Ivy in Batman the Animated Series continuity. The redesigned version we later met in the new Batman Adventures was a vegetable creature in human shape, meant to keep Batman off Ivy's tail as she went off the grid for good. What's awesome about this little story is that Ivy eventually formed a relationship with a pre-Swamp Thing Alec Holland. I love that idea. The relationship I'm talking about. Not sure about the twist of having the real Ivy not involved in further stories within the DCAU. I haven't read nearly enough of the Batman Adventures comic series, so I don't know what's canon and what's not from those books. I'll just consider it a really cool alternate take on the character's journey. House and Garden is for sure worth seeing or seeing again. It's simultaneously Poison Ivy at her most immoral and her most sympathetic. Find it, watch it, enjoy it. <sighs> Mommy. No.